Good to have you back with us, boys. Monks four and five, same as usual. Name's Monk Slavin. You ever work round up this part of the country before? Lassiter's last year. Mm. Well, Lassiter's hiring on men. Why don't you go back there? Well, I had a little trouble. It weren't nothing. Something about cutting up a man, wasn't it? Just an Indian. You better look someplace else. We'll pass. All right, that'll be bunk 14. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Hello, Goliath. How are you? Glass. Fine. Didn't know that horse of yours was still alive. You uh, want to get on him and find out? <laughs> no, sir. I'll take your word for it. Good to have you back, Goliath. Goliath, you'll be in bunk 15. Hey, where's your teeth? Oh, well. You're out here. How come you don't have men? Well, it gets lonesome on the trail, you know. I gotta have somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> that Goliath, that toothless old cuss will never change, will he? Hey, Dave, good to see you. You'll be in bunk 18. You'll be riding point. Next. Howdy. Had a rough night? Oh, no. I've been treating this cold. Well, I, uh, sorry, I don't think we can use you this trip. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, wait a minute. Uh, my name is Wharton. Russ Wharton. I'm Mary Farnham's husband. Mary and me have been traveling back from Oregon. I need, I need this job. Where's Mary? Coming along behind, driving the buckboard. How about it, Mr. Cartwright? I really need the job. Cabin for married couples back at the bunkhouse. Thanks. Wharton. I'll be in to see you once you settle in. Tell Mary. Uh, we're beholden to you. Poor little gal. Don't look like she did too well for herself, did it? Who's fighting? You're not going to get any work out of him. It's been so long. Yeah, it sure has been. Too long. You know, when, when your husband told me that you'd come back to the Ponderosa, I just couldn't believe it. Sure is good to have you here. Yeah, sure is. I 
don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you, uh, you just don't say anything. Now, Mary, I, uh, I had come up north, you know, when, when your pa died, but we didn't hear for an awful long time, you know. Nine years ago now, isn't it? Right after I married Ross. I think that that's all that kept Pa alive, was waiting to see me safe. Quite a young woman. Married lady. Mary, uh, what happened with the ranch? <sighs> Everything was going fine for a while. Russ had things going real good. Everything started to go wrong. Russ is a good, hard worker, Uncle Ben, but even he couldn't cope with it. You can understand that. Of course. But uh, you could have written. I know. But as Pa always said, share your joys, but keep your troubles to yourself. And thank you for taking us in. Now, Mary, you... You don't thank a rancher for taking on extra hands at roundup time. You don't better than that. Would you have hired him... if you hadn't felt sorry for me? Well, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, hey, you know, I, I was just looking for you. Uh, Mary, darling, why, why don't you go and make Mr. Cartwright some oh, coffee? Oh, no, 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 it's all right. I was just, I was just, uh, just leaving. Thank you. Uh, what did you want to see me about? Well, uh, you understand that ordinarily I, I would never ask this, but... Russ! Oh, no, it's all right, Mary. Well, you see, uh, we had to push so hard in order to get here. That we, we ran out of supplies. And so I was wondering if uh, perhaps you couldn't uh, advance us a few dollars. There's actually no need for that. You can get all the supplies you want from our storeroom. Any one of the hands will tell you where it is. I'll uh, get along now. You, can, you know where I am if you need me. Cartwright. Look, uh, I got to have a few dollars. Oh, not, not for me. But, uh, the fact is, tomorrow's Mary's birthday. Don't you remember that I've never once failed to send Mary some little remembrance on her birthday, which I figure is about three months away? a few dollars to you. I'm, I'm going to earn it. Not if you're drunk, you won't. Over there. Hit 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 over there.
good head count so far, Paul. They're the best-looking calves we've ever had. We ought to start branding pretty soon. Yeah, they are pretty good-looking. Which one's so short-handed? That's what Swarton do. Well, you might as well know the truth, Paul. He, he didn't even show up at Chuck Wagon at noon. He just, just rode off somewhere. I don't know. Come on in. Hi, little Joe. How's it going? Pretty good. All right. Coffee? No, uh, I just come to tell you... Well, I just come to tell you the bunkhouse has been robbed. Uh, what's missing? Six dollars from Charlie Drake and a bottle of whiskey from me. You sure? Well, I'm missing a bottle of whiskey, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sure. Uh, let's have a look. Right. That's all I heard from you since the day I married you. Now, don't you think I know why you wanted me to come here? No! You did no. it? Rest. I'm telling you why no. you did it. No. To show me up. Now, that's why. Yeah. No. No more coffee. Hot chocolate at night time. Missy say make you sleep better. <laughs> oh, everything much better since you here, Missy Mary. Here, let me do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I was just uh, a little stiff. Doing a little roping today, and I guess I'm not quite used to it. Now just lean over a little bit, all right? Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just keep that up, and I, I may fall asleep sitting straight up. Well, why don't you? yourself tonight. Uh, you no thank Hop Singh. You thank Missy Mary. She is a very fine cook. Everything she touched tastes just a little bit better. Yes, you know. <laughs> thank you, Hop Singh. It's a fine idea have lady in this house. Everything is so much better. Hey, it'll take somebody pretty special to get into Hop Singh's kitchen. It sure does. The last time I was in there, he took a meat cleaver after me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still thinks of me as a little girl. Uh, we'll have dessert in the living room. Why don't you go in, stretch out, and relax? All right. Good. All right. 
Now, where is she? People in town. Now, they told me about your new housekeeper. Now, you think I don't know what's going on here? Okay. Wooden, why don't you get yourself sobered up? And then you can come back to me, and I'll listen to every word you have to say. Uh, I... Ow, oh, my wife! Yes. No. Come on, you're going with me. Oh, come on. We... We, we don't need them. Come on. Ben. Hey, get... Ben, I've got to go with him, please. I can't please. let you go with him. Get your hand. Can't let you can't go to him in this condition. I'll go back into the kitchen. <sighs> Better take him to the sheriff's office. All right, I can. St Wait a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to get her back, you know. I have to kill you to do it. Well, unless you straighten yourself out, Wharton. That's exactly what you'll have to do. you didn't press charges. Keeping you in jail is not going to do any good. You got to straighten yourself out. And, and meanwhile, you can tell my wife what a mistake she made marrying me. Is that it? Now, you've done a pretty good job of telling her that yourself. Here's your wages. Hey, what, what's this for? To buy me off? And it won't work. She's my wife. And when I leave here, she leaves with me. sober now. I'm telling you, sober. Number one, whatever it is you're thinking, you get that right out of your mind. And number two, you try hurting her again, and you'll really deal with me. Look who's here. Must be slim pickings all over. Give us a couple of beers, Cosmo. Howdy, Mr. Lassiter. The name's Slavin. Monk Slavin. Remember me? Yeah. Buy yourself and the rest of those saddle tramps a drink. 
Thanks, Mr. Lassiter. Who's he? He owns the Big L. You're not going to ask him for a job. Why not? We're all short of hands. Oh, come on. Don't kid yourself. You mark bad, just like the rest of us. Mr. Lassiter, can you use a good hand? Yes, I could. All the good ones are working. Look, I really want a job. Then there's one wide open for you. More than 20 miles of public land past the ranch boundaries. We all lose 50 to 100 strays there every year. There's a dollar a head bounty for every calf you bring out. Two dollars a steer. You want a job? Make one. Well, you mean what you say about paying that bounty? I'm going to try. Suit yourself. I'll pay. So will the others. So you're going to go rounding up strays, huh, Mr. Wharton? Pays good money. What's wrong with it? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. Except scrub and rock slopes that'll kill your horse in a day. And half crazy steers that you have to climb up and drive down by foot. When you get mounted up, you've lost them again. That is, if you haven't broken your neck by then. Well, what do you know, Mr. Wharton's gonna go bounty hunting, strike a rich. <laughs> Lovely night. Oh, say, I, uh... Mm. I want to thank you for that, uh, well, the comfort here that you're making for me. I think it's going to be real nice and, and very warm. It's going to be, well, I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Oh, that's very sweet. I've been, uh, thinking about making a couple for the boys, too. Mary, you're just going to spoil us rotten. <laughs> I like spoiling you. Yeah, I guess maybe that's a woman's reason for living. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody to spoil. <laughs> ben. Being here with you and little, little Joe and Horse, well, I don't know how to tell you what it, what it is I want to say. It... You don't have to say anything. Oh, no, no, please. I want to. Th there's a religion where they believe that when a person dies, he's born again. Well, that's what's happening with me. Being here with you, all the love and affection one can feel around here. <laughs> a sense of security. Well, that's, that's good. Well, it's, it's like what I used to feel when I was a little girl back home. Ben, I can't go back to... to humiliation. And, no, I just can't. I've made up my mind. I know what I have to do. I want to see a lawyer. I want to divorce Russ. It's a... It's a big step. No. Not when the love you once had for a man has died. It sure has. I know what love is, Ben. I know it very well. It's what I want. It's what any woman wants. But, Ben, I can't find comfort and forgetfulness in a bottle the way Russ is doing. I just hope that you... that you're doing the right thing. I'm not a child. I'm not going to just 
rush into anything. Well, that's good. That, that means you don't have to rush into a divorce. No. No. no I don't suppose I, I do. Then you'll wait. If that's what you think is best. I think it'd be a, a wise decision. Food's a lot better than your wagon. <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? I tell you, that hop sing. Thank you, Walt. Mm. Hop sing got his cousin over here. He was afraid the other fellow was going to poison me. <laughs> hey, how are you today? Ed Lasser up on the line. Uh huh? Said Russ Wharton's collecting strays for bounty. He's bringing in quite a few of them, too. Hmm. Oh, that's good news. That means he's sober. Maybe he's getting some sense into him. Yeah, means he's getting some money, too. If he doesn't start drinking, come gunning for you again. No, Joe. No, fella. You're all alone. Working hard. Give some time to think. Just hope you're right. You took my advice. You're gonna buy the house a drink? Whiskey. Find any Ponderosa strays? I hear tell Ben Cartwright's got one of yours. <laughs> you mention my wife again, and I'll kill you. Oh. <laughs> But you're as about as happy as I am. Roundup's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the days get pretty long, don't oh, they? Oh, they sure do. Who are you shipping out with this year? Oh, Mike Yates, same as usual. Just signed the papers at the lawyers. Well, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. I'm running kind of late. I better get started, I guess. See ya. Yeah. Say, Ben. Huh? You hear that uh, Russ Wharton's been uh, rounding up some strays for me? Yeah, yeah, I did hear that. Hey, he's been doing a pretty good job for you, too. He's doing a good job for everybody, Ben. Not only me. Mm hmm Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, ben, I, uh, I'm not much for gossip. But, uh, talk is that there's bad blood between you two. Well, yeah, the, Yeah, we, we had a few words. Not many secrets in Virginia City. Word is that, uh, Horton's wife is staying with you. 
Never try to keep that a secret. No. No, of course not. Well, uh, see you later, Ben. Mary, mm -hmm. uh, do you mind if I come along with you? <laughs> no, I'd love it. Something I'd like to discuss with you. Won't be too long. You're a good cookie. We sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Thurber tells me that you were in to see him. I was uh, hoping that you'd talk to me before you went to see a lawyer. I didn't talk to you because I... I knew that well, you'd only try to talk me out of it again. Well, uh... There might be reason that I might. Uh, I bumped into a friend of mine at Led Lasseter, rancher, who uh, talked me about Russ. Russ is doing some work for him. Running up strays. And he's doing a good job for him, too. But, you know, he's done this before. He, he's worked for a couple of days, and then, well, it never leads to anything. Well, I thought you should know that Russ is, well, seems to be trying to pull himself together. Set himself up on his two feet. I, I sure hate to see you do anything to put you in a corner without being able to get out. Oh, Ben, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I've made up my mind. I just would rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> look. Ben, why don't we just enjoy a, a nice walk? Please? Come on. If you'd been counting the shots, you'd have known this gun is empty. I don't like a gun pointed in my direction, empty or not. What are you doing here? This isn't Ponderosa land. I checked that. I uh, heard you were running up strays for the body. None of those are yours. I don't touch your cattle. Why not? You pay the same bond as anybody else? I don't like your money, Mr. Cartwright. How's my wife? She has a roof over her head. Oh, and that's more than I was able to give her. Is that what you're saying? Well, you ask the question, you answer it. I will. In due time. Hey, uh, 
The poor child that you're doing pretty good at this. Well, that's the best thing you've got to do with your time, getting reports on me. I got work to do. What about Mary? Any word for her? Yeah. Yeah, tell her I'm uh, glad she's got a roof over her head. Well, I'll tell you. This roundup is over. I'm going to sleep for three days. Yeah, well, the roundup's not over yet. We better grab a little shut eye right now. Right. Good night. Good night, Nelson. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. They're wonderful boys, Ben. Yes, they are. I'm a very fortunate man. You know something, Ben? I envy you very much. You know something? I envy you very much. You have a whole wonderful life ahead of you. I wish I could believe that. Mary, I saw Russ today. Is he, uh, is he all right? I saw a man who you once told me about. A man with pride and dignity. Oh, the pride was a little wounded. And maybe there was a dent in the dignity, but... It was all there. Russ is working hard, day and night. He's doing well. I know he's proud of that. And he hasn't taken a drink. And he won't. Mary, I, uh, I don't know what discussions you've had with your lawyer, but I sure hope that they haven't gone so far that you can't change your mind. I don't want to change my mind. No, oh, Mary. It's too late, Ben. Don't you, don't you realize that? Happier than I've I've been in years. Mary, I what? Mary, I, I want you to be the happiest young lady in the world. I guess I've... I've really made a fool of myself, haven't I? No, Mary, you... You could never make a fool of yourself with me.
What do you want? The lawyer fella gave me two dollars. He gave you this. There ain't no love letter. It's from your wife. <laughs> Hop sing clad round up over. Now you eat all meal regular time again. Yeah, well, I'll be home for supper tonight. Good. Oh, yes. Come to see Mary? I want to see you. few things that I wanted to say before I go. One of them is a, comes a little hard. Thanks. Tell her that I'm sorry. Tell her you're sorry. Nine years of married life, and all you can say about it is that you're sorry. What's a man supposed to say? Well, I don't know. I imagine he could say quite a few things, like uh, maybe even some of the things that he used to say. She might like to hear them again. I made her come here. Mm -hmm. I used her to make it easy for myself. Mm -hmm. And I saw you. Place. Everything that we had once. Only it fell apart in my hands. You know, I hated you. I hated you because you could give her everything that I couldn't. You did not hate me. You hated yourself. Although I, I don't know why. You didn't start a fire. You didn't start a flood. You didn't do any of those things. No, I, I, I know that. Uh, now. Then why don't you tell Mary that you know that now? No, I don't want to hurt her anymore. I want her to have everything she deserves. Everything she deserves. Now, Russ, do you really think she has everything she deserves now? How much more is there? She is in love with you, you know. Well, you know that, don't you? Well, don't you? She always has been. Oh, Russ. You loco. Oh, Russ, you couldn't be more wrong. Oh, I'd hope that she... That she loves me as a daughter might love a father, but... She's looking for the love and security that she can find in, in you. She loves the man that you once were. The man that you are again today, now. Well, I'm afraid it's a little late for that, because... I got the divorce papers today. Well, what are you going to do about them? Here's the money that, that I earned rounding up those strays. Take out what I stole from you in the bunkhouse. And give the rest to Mary. I'm not going to run your errands for you. She's in her room. You can give her that money yourself. I'm right here, Uncle Ben. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. You look nice. So do you. I was wrong. I was too. I heard what, uh, what you said to Ben. Well, whatever you want, not for yourself. That, that's what I want for you. It's been so long. Yeah, it sure has been. Too long. You know, when, when your husband told me that you'd come back to the Ponderosa, I just couldn't believe it. Sure is. Why? Last time. Didn't know that horse of yours was still alive. You uh, want to get on him and find out? <laughs> no, sir. I'll take your word for it. Good to have you back, Goliath. Goliath, you'll be in bunk 15. Hey, where's your teeth? Oh, well. You're out here. How come you don't have men? Well, it gets lonesome on the trail, you know. I gotta have somebody to talk to. <laughs> 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 that Goliath. That toothless old cuss will never change with really. him. Hey, Dave, good to see you. You'll be in buck 18. <laughs> You'll be riding point. Next. Howdy. Had a rough night? Oh, no. I've been treating this cold. Well, I, uh... Sorry, I don't think we can use you this trip. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, wait a minute. Uh, my name is Wharton. Russ Wharton. I'm Mary Farnham's husband. Mary and me have been traveling back from Oregon. I need, I need this job. Good to have you here. Yeah, sure is. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you, uh, you just don't say anything. Now, Mary, I, uh, I had to come up north, you know, when, when your pa died. But 
We didn't hear for an awful long time. You know. Nine years ago now, isn't it? Right after I married Russ. I think that that's all that kept Pa alive, was waiting to see me safe. Quite a young woman. Mary Lady. Mary, yeah. Uh, what happened with the ranch? <sighs> Everything was going fine for a while. Russ had things going real good. Everything started to go wrong. Russ is a good, hard worker, Uncle Ben, but even he couldn't cope with it. You can understand that. Of course. Have you back with us, boys. Monks four and five, same as usual. Name's Monk Slavin. You ever work round up this part of the country before? Lassiter's last year. Mm. Well, Lassiter's hiring on men. Why don't you go back there? Well, I had a little trouble. It weren't nothing. Something about cutting up a man, wasn't it? Just an Indian. You better look someplace else, we'll pass. All right, that'll be bunk 14. Hello, Mr. Carl Ryan. Hello, Goliath. How are you? Where's Mary? Coming along behind, driving the buckboard. How about it, Mr. Cartwright? I really need the job. <sighs> Got a cabin for married couples back at the bunkhouse. Thanks. Wharton. I'll be in to see you once you're settled in. Tell Mary. Uh, we'll be holding to you. Like she did too well for herself, did it? I suppose fighting, you're not gonna get any work out of them. <laughs> 